This is All Sports All the Time, episode number 29 of season two. It only took, what's 162 plus 29, Luke? <laughs> it only took that many episodes for us to get a second Luke on the podcast. We haven't known him since episode one. I mean, yeah, but we haven't had a second Luke on the podcast since episode yeah, one either. So I should have started trying to get you on before we knew you. It but still I, took us on that, one. that amount of time. But um, yeah, we've got Luke McClister with Luke Paglia joining all of us on All Sports All the Time. Um, it was two, two years, over two years ago that uh, we met, Luke and I met Luke. This is going to get really confusing. What do we call the Lukes this episode? Okay, so we have Luke, Luke Paglia, and Luke McClister, who will, during this episode, be referred to as McClister. Yes. Or Mickey. Uh, just... <laughs> <laughs> or, or McFlurry. Oh, McFlurry. I... McFlurry is good. I like that. So that would have been, I don't remember exactly what episode it was on, but it was within the season of our lives when Luke and I had bleached blonde hair. So that's, that's how McClister met us. he ever met us, like his first impression of us was bleach blonde hair. Yeah, I walked in, you guys walked in to Spooky Nook, I was like, these guys are like idiots. <laughs> I talked to you guys, and you guys were like, actually oh, super cool dudes, so... Yeah. And I've got really good news for you guys, for you listeners. Me and Owen have agreed to do it again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A very special no Eagle retirement. Whoa, that did are not happen. Serious? No. Wait, are you actually? <laughs> no no oh, shot. Man, you can't just say that. Oh my. I thought you were going to do it again. <laughs> it's clickbait. Mm-mm. Oh my gosh. Owen and Luke bleaching their hair again. Question guys, mark, question mark. Totally do it. Oh, yeah. Man. No chance. It's crazy oh, okay. how all of that came full circle, though, because we bleached our hair blonde in honor of Zach Ertz leaving the Eagles, and we were remembering his legacy. And now, just the other day, Zach Ertz has joined the Washington Commanders, the team that Luke is a fan of. So, just crazy timing that that whole thing, it's all connected to Zach Ertz. I mean, in retrospect... I would have rather done it for Kelsey than Ertz. Yeah, well, Kelsey did. Kelsey bleached his hair. Yeah, Ertz, that's what so I'm saying. I'd rather also attached. Than Ertz. What would we do? Would we bleach our hair for Kelsey as well? Yeah, I mean, he just retired. You guys gotta do it. You gotta. Do Parker's it. just looking for any any reason now. <laughs> no. I I agree. And it was bad enough, so definitely don't dye your hair. Okay, there you go. I do like how the lesson there is to you should definitely judge people by their appearance because we locked it we walked in looking ridiculous and we turned out to be cool so you should judge people by how they look. Um, so this episode is going to be um, basically just talking about sports, all sports, all the time, uh, and then we have a game at the end that I think is either going to be really good or really bad. So there's four of us. We'll each um, give just a sports topic that we want to talk about. Does anyone want to present one first from sports recently? Okay, we, Luke, you have your hand raised. Let's call on you. I would like to talk about the thing that we all want to talk about, the thing that we all don't want to talk about, the retirement of the beloved, of the wondrous, of the all-loving, of the majestic of the beautiful Jason Kelsey. This is like the opposite of his Baker Mayfield descriptions. <laughs> Everything I've ever said about Baker Mayfield in my entire lifetime pick, pull the complete opposite of that word and that is exactly what that answer. That is exactly what describes Jason Kelsey. Go ahead. Um, I'd like to talk about well, no, it's not your turn. We're good. <laughs> we got to talk about Jason Kelsey and then. Talk about Jason Kelsey and then you can. <laughs> I mean, I don't have much to say. I definitely, definitely the better Kelsey brother for sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, we would agree with that. We're biased, but yeah. I admire um, his dedication 
to to um, Philadelphia Eagles. Glad he got a ring. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad he got a ring. I don't believe you. I don't think you're actually glad, but that's nice to say. I was it's good. <laughs> you beat the Patriots. You beat the Patriots. Oh, okay. Fair. All right. Yeah. yeah. Everybody was happy. I think. Yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the guy's an absolute stud. Best center in the league for probably the last twelve years. Right before that, he was the second best center for another twelve years. Twenty-four years of straight dominance, and really, you can't compete with him. I mean, there's no center that can move quite as quickly as he can. Mm-hmm. He literally just the way that he's able to use his hips and his power to hook the defenders, and um, yeah, he just is really just unstoppable. And so he went to his his uh, retirement grave being number one. You know, he went out on top, just like Tom Brady. And uh, yeah, it's really really admirable and. Um, yeah, I just think that uh, I just think he's super awesome. He's a good guy. He's a father, you know, and uh, he's going to be able to be with his kids now, you know, so he's going to be able to spend time with his family. Going to still go to his brother's football games, probably. And he's just a family man, you know, just a family guy and a great football player, great person. And I'm happy for him. And uh, he should have another 24 years of dominance um, off the field as well. Maybe I feel it. Pete. Uh, Whoa! I don't know why not on top, but no, I was I was thinking about that. I was actually thinking like tough year to go out on. You know, obviously mm-hmm. biggest collapse to ever see the game of football ever in their entire collapsing career was the Eagles last year. It was ugly, but like aside from that, aside from like the collapse of the season, Jason Kelsey like. Yes, winning the Super Bowl in 2018 was a high, for sure. Like, that's definitely a high point of his career. But, like, even over just the last two years, getting to, like, go to the Super Bowl with his brother. Like, I, you know, I listened to their podcast, and he was like, obviously my Super... Like, Jason Kelsey said this. Obviously, my Super Bowl year and ring was, like, a huge part of my career. But this week leading up to the Super Bowl, getting to do all the media stuff with his brother, with his mom, with his family, he was like... This has just been a surreal experience and I wouldn't trade it for the world. And so I just think like getting to do that towards the end of your career and then even just like the success of their podcast and just getting to, you know, grow closer with his family over the last, you know, even year. I think that's been like such a high point of his career. And like, you know, centers don't get publicity. Jason Kelsey made, was became famous as a center, which is like unheard of. And I feel like that even just over the last year has become so much more prominent than it ever has before yeah i feel kind of like jealous almost i don't know if that's exactly the right word but like jason kelsey was ours like he not that people didn't know who he was but like philadelphia had and loved jason kelsey and like we if it had just stayed that way like we would have appreciated him this exact same amount when he retired but now, like over the past two years, he's grown in popularity everywhere else. And everyone else is like, it feels like they've jumped on the Jason Kelsey bandwagon a little bit. Yeah. And it's not bad. I He absolutely deserves it. But it's almost yeah. like, uh, yeah, like you guys are very late to this. Like we in Philadelphia have have known and appreciated him. You guys have only appreciated him for a couple of I mean, years. You gotta realize, like, how many pe- how many fans like unless you're like a real diehard fan can actually name their center exactly or on Pretty other awesome. team centers yeah exactly uh, no I don't think so all right game McClister name as many NFL centers as you can go Kelsey he's not an NFL center anymore oh no great point Luke <laughs> um yeah no actually in all honesty I probably didn't know who Jason Kelsey was until like four years ago. So okay. yeah. that's like, yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Oh, and with the whole like jealousy thing, I don't know if that's what it is, but like, you know, I could, you know, being an Eagles fan, rave about Jason Kelsey because he was just one of those guys on the team. He just was one of those Philadelphia guys. And people would be like, were you talking about? And they only part- knew him as the guy in the jester costume from the Super Bowl. Exactly. Mm-hmm. 
that's and that was his thing. Like, I, like social media blew up when he retired. Like you could not go on Instagram without seeing, you know, Jason Kelsey retired. And obviously I follow a lot of Eagles and Philadelphia mm-hmm. oriented pages, but like sports center, Everywhere. ESPN, like everybody was covering, um, uh, Jason Kelsey's retirement. And I think like for a center, he wasn't as big as he was like, you're not like, you're not going to see that much coverage on a center's retirement. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you'll probably see some stuff from Philadelphia, but like ESPN sports center, you might get a quick notification. Oh, 12 year all pro center, Jason Kelsey retired, mm-hmm. but like, you're not going to see much else about it. So, yeah, he's what first ballot Hall of Famer. Oh, oh absolutely, he, arguably the, the greatest ball. center of all time. Nine, I will be standing in K and watching this man get inducted into the Hall of Fame with blonde with hair. No, oh. uh, no, it's coming back. No, what's the um? Who, who's who's married by then? My wife would probably say no. Yeah, that's true. Will Luke who's be married the... by twenty twenty five? No, whoa, whoa, twenty twenty nine. Oh, I will not be married next year, I don't think. 2029. I think I'm gonna say yes. We'll clip this. I mean oh, can't talk about that. Never mind. My I would guess as well. Yes. I I would I would um I would say it's 50 50. 50 50. If he's alive. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Guys, I saw a really sad quote the other day. Oh no. So you guys know, like you got your boys, like you guys are my boys. Every single one of there is going to be one of them that has to bury and attend every single one of his brother's funerals. Okay. Why did we have to talk? Uh, he will have nobody to attend his. Jason Kelsey retiring was already pretty sad. And you were like, you know how I can make this sadder? Talk about all of our collective deaths. <laughs> Like, doesn't that hit though? Like, that is, yeah. Like, if you two die before me, then I'm gonna have to go to both your funerals, but neither of you are gonna get to go to mine. Yeah. <laughs> is Parker laughing or crying? <laughs> I don't know. I just think that's so funny. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. The, the, oh, that, thank goodness. Sorry, I just think expected. seeing Luke in an open casket is going to be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so over the years, we've had Luke laugh at some pretty ridiculous <laughs> stuff. He laughed at um, when Tyrod Taylor's lung got punctured. He laughed at Kelly Oubre getting hit by a car. But Parker oh, laughing oh. at the thought of Luke being in an open casket is the top. Nothing surpassing that. Oh man, no. I'm glad I'm not on the chopping block anymore. Wow. <laughs> Could you? I was going to ask Parker if he could elaborate on that. Do we want him to elaborate on that or not? I, I think we need to just move on I, to the next. Yeah, McClister, what was your sports topic? <laughs> um, birds to the Commanders and just the franchise uh, in general. I I didn't say I like your pickup. Whoa, whoa, boo that take. You should love the pickup. Hey, okay. The only thing I have against Zach Ertz in the past two years is oh, my fantasy team. And ever since he's left the Eagles, can put up great numbers. Yeah, so, oh, that's fair. Um, I, I definitely think he's like a solid backup. It could definitely like mentor a younger tight end and be great. But, you know, knowing the commander's franchise, he will definitely start at some point next season. I can guarantee, I can almost guarantee you that. If the commanders draft a tight end this year, that would be perfect. Oh, for sure, yeah. You know, the commanders should draft that guy who in the NFL combine, he didn't realize the drill was... Oh, like, the one-handed... Uh, yeah. 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 Ertz will that teach guy. him up. Yeah, teach him up, you know? Like, he that guy, up. he's got hands, you know? This was like him, he was like, mm-hmm. grab the football... And I could really see him just really helping out the commanders because they do. Let's just be honest here, McCluster. They do really need help, like really bad. Really bad, yeah. 
So what do they do? I think they should hire you. Say you're the general manager. What do you do to turn this franchise around? Other than adding Ertz, which is a huge step in any team's success. Um, I think I do what this franchise has been to do for the past five years is acquire um, a competent offensive line and then just go from there. You because, keep Sam Howell? Uh, dude, I think anybody. I think, you know, you saw it happen with RG3. You saw it happen with Kirk Cousins. I could go on, but I'm not going to. Um, but we just destroy every quarterback's hopes. And it's just painful to see, but, you know, over time, you kind of just get used to it. So, How can we get you to bleach your hair for Zach Ertz? Me? Yeah. I will bleach my hair for Zach Ertz, but if the commanders want a Super Bowl for the next time year, I will bleach my hair. Mark it. That works. <laughs> Clips. I just put on video evidence. That will be on YouTube for a clip. So I saved. They're not going to win a championship. Let's just be honest. <laughs> it's possible. It's like what Parker like two years ago said: if the Vikings want the Super Bowl, he we should already died in purple. I, I forgot about I'm that. serious. I totally would have, but they didn't win the Super Bowl. So yeah, there was no hope of that. <laughs> Yeah, no, there wasn't. I think, um, no, honestly, though, I could see a world where the commanders, if they do have a good offensive line, really turn stuff around. I mean, the NFC, usually, the NFC East especially has a different contender every single year, for the most part, um, at the top of the division. So, you know, who knows within the next five years if the commanders will be that that playoff team. That's like, that's good. That's huge. So you'll bleach your hair. No, no, I do not do that. <laughs> but if we were to play all game, like, it's going to be a good day. Hmm. You should just hire Dan Campbell. I don't know how they how they pulled that off. but I don't know how we do that. So. Yeah. yeah. Just don't play <laughs> but it, would be, it would be nice, though. It would be cool. Just don't play us on a Monday night in Pennsylvania. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. Your record on Monday night in you two are now against undefeated teams. Oh, we beat Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. And they're undefeated. And we beat Chief. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Good for you guys. You've only ever played two games on Monday nights in Pennsylvania. Oh, probably not. But like uh, the last I, two. I, I, the last, last two against the undefeated last. teams. All right. They were always seven, but then they, they won two in a row. Now they're two and oh. Yep. <laughs> That's what matters. Stats oh. don't lie. Stats don't lie. Yeah. Because like, do you remember every one? Like between the years of like 2015 and 2020, the Eagles are one and zero in Super Bowls. Like, yep. <laughs> the Eagles have not lost a Super Bowl. Guys, we gotta like we gotta take our silent W's when we can take our silent W's. So yeah, no, that's that's fair. Mm-hmm. And Zach Ertz is a loud W. It's all about the little things, you know. I feel that. No, I agree, especially. Especially with, you know, the commander's organization. Yeah. yeah. But they Plus, do have a good, a, a, a rich history. A rich history. They've got multiple team names. You know, they've got a lot of players that have played for them. They've won more Super Bowls <laughs> um, than I, a lot of teams. I ask you guys this question. As Philly fans, how do you think, I mean, what do you guys think about Josh Harris being the owner of Washington, the new owner of Washington? Because he is does stuff for the Sixers so yeah don't don't love it um don't really completely understand it but um it's just kind of a reminder that a lot of these guys are more businessmen than they are sports fans and so it's yeah just like a reminder of like oh yeah they don't care as much as we think they do right it makes you value more Cuban someone who actually does care well but wasn't he, he talking about selling the Mavericks <laughs> Yeah, didn't he sell? Yeah, he he cared for a while. He did care for a yeah. while. Yeah, he did. And he, he was really good for the Mavericks. I mean, in order to buy a team, like I think you almost have to go all in on like business your whole life, mm-hmm. and then like you, you know, can't turn you that off. Math, it doesn't right, seem right. right. If, if you like football, right? You're you know you're spending time watching football. You're a football fan. You don't make enough money then to buy a football team, right? Probably. I mean, I, I, that's what I would think. And, and then Lee Jerry have, like, Jones has cracked the code. 
billionaire people, right? They spend their whole life like business, business, business that they don't even have time for football. And then they're just like another investment or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Jerry Jones figured it out. He got really rich early in his, not early in his life, but like he got really rich fast enough, bought the Cowboys. And then now he just watches football and runs the team. So it's you. You got to you got to peak soon enough to be Jerry Jones, just like the Cowboys peaked in the nineties. So, yeah. Speaking of like peaking, um, I I want not peaking necessarily, but really cool stuff. Oh, and I want to ask you. I saw a photo of you touching Aaron Nola. That made it oh. sound so weird. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm not, I'm just saying like. I saw a photo of it. Consensually I... touching Aaron Nola. Yeah, so tell me the story. Uh, yeah, I got to go to... I'm actually wearing the Foul Territory shirt because we went to um, Cardinals spring training today. So, um, I, I they no nobody else has given us labels yet. I was a technician today. I guess oh. they have to give you a title. So... Um, but yeah, I went to uh, Philly's spring training with Foul Territory, and it was pretty surreal. They set us up to do the show, like, uh, right outside where all the players walk in from the parking lot into the clubhouse. So just, like, 75% of the Phillies roster walked past us, and it was, it took so much willpower not to stare and be like, um... The first per- first person I saw was Bryson Stott. Definitely stared at him too long because it was the first the first one, and I <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, it was sweet. We had um, Larry Boa, Aaron Nola, and Brandon Marsh on the show as guests, and so um, the interns there we took turns uh, miking and miking them up and putting in their IFB so that they could hear the other hosts who are not there asking them questions and stuff. Um, and so obviously I called dibs on Aaron Nola cause obviously, um, and so yeah, that was, that was pretty cool. Um, I also, I didn't get him on the show, but I sealed the deal. So AJ Przinsky, former major league catcher is one of the hosts earlier in the day, Aaron walked by, he's been on the show before he was teammates with Eric Kratz, one of the hosts. He's talked with AJ before, so he walks by. AJ was like, hey, Aaron, you want to come on later? And Aaron was like, yeah, sure. Kept going. So that's like, AJ was the starting pitcher. I was the closer who got the save. When Aaron came back, I was tasked with going over, getting his attention, and being like, hey, you can you be on in like five minutes? And so I went over, I asked him if he could be on in five minutes, and he said, yep, sounds good, thank you. So Aaron Nola said a sentence to me, which was the highlight of the day. Wait, so, no, two sentences. Like, yup, technically, good. yeah, yeah. And then yeah, he said thank you again cool. after the interview. So three sentences. Mm-hmm. So when you mic'd him up, did you feel like an electric shock wave, like go from his body into you? <laughs> Maybe. Thunderstruck. Maybe yeah. a little bit. <laughs> um, I. <laughs> He's gonna be so bad now, and then you're gonna be so whoa. Good, and then you okay, to, and then you have to give his powers back to him. Yeah, like that's how the other short works. I would like to think yeah. that I added powers, like kind of a reverse. But oh, wait, oh, and did you say you had Brandon Marsh on the show? Yes, shook his hand. He has huge hands. Oh wow, interesting. Was his hair like it normally is? Yes. Well, no. Uh, it was it was tied up in like a messy bun at the back. He didn't have it down. Play. Oh yeah, I was gonna say whoever mic'd him up, you had to ask him like, what does this hair feel like? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, he. We had issues with his uh, like because the IFB goes back behind their head. Yeah. Like we had to maneuver uh, his hair because it was kind of in the way. So oh. uh, yeah, it, it, it professional athletes are big. That was that was the biggest takeaway. Like Brandon Marsh is six two, I think. Nola's like six three. They're big, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah to wait till you work in the basketball world. It was very cool, dude. Yeah, you get really tall guys, and then wait till you work in the football world, and then you just get like huge. tall and large. Yeah. So just like running at you, you'd probably cower in fear. 
Uh, I would. Yeah, that's why I don't aspire to play in the NFL. So I think it'd be fun to play in the NFL. Cool. <laughs> I did. I don't know, but one one hit by like anyone. Clean, one gone. hit by anyone. <laughs> I think he's retired. <laughs> still, still. <laughs> I did see Luke, not my sports story, but I did see that the Lancaster Barnstormers are looking for a bullpen catcher. Oh, I'm sorry, not the Lancaster Barnstormers. Um, the uh, the Iron Pigs. I'll still do it. <laughs> it's the Iron Pigs. Who is that? It's the Phillies uh, AAA minor league team. They're in Lehigh Valley. That was uh, Pennsylvania mm. minor league teams. Um, so yeah, Luke could be the, the Iron Pigs bullpen catcher. That'd be pretty sweet. Probably be the fastest I've ever caught. I've caught 95 before, but that was off of a pitching machine. Mm. Fastest you've caught off a human. Probably so. somewhere in the 80s. I mean, whatever a high school pitcher can do. Uh, yeah, it, it would be the fastest you caught off a human oh. if you if you did that. Yeah. Yeah. So, career opportunity, just... Yeah, in case in case you wanted that. Um has exclaimed he has a funny story. Go oh ahead. no. So I used to, like back in the day, playing machine pitch baseball. Uh they asked me to try out being catcher at practice. Took one right to the face and it got it got caught in like the fish <laughs> mass. And that was pretty funny. Oh did it save you like from hitting you directly? Oh yeah, it got like stuck like in the in Inches. the face mass. Was that scary? I was in like first grade, so I was a shrot. But uh, <laughs> you did you like ever catch again stuff. afterwards? Sorry, right, well, um, um, yeah, I'm safe to say I didn't play. I'm a great catcher. Okay, yes, I played catcher a lot. I was a pretty good catcher too. Luke came yeah. on the podcast for the first time because of an injury related to oh, being yeah, a catcher. Yeah, that in that story. Yeah, if he wasn't messing with his catching gear then it wouldn't happen so it's all because he was a catcher not what happened did you not listen to the story owen i thought you were over by your catching gear yeah i was but i just got off the base path i took my batting helmet off because i got a double play turn but if you weren't a catcher you wouldn't have a catcher's bag to go over to that's a fair point so yeah but if the person who hit me was swinging where we normally warm up swung that I would have gotten hit. Uh, that too, but I think we can mostly blame it on you being a catcher. So, are you a catcher? Yeah. yeah, Parker. What's your sports topic of the week? Well, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot that happened. You know, we could talk about, you know, Jason Kelsey. We could talk about, you know, football. But I want to talk about my bread and butter, right? Something that you eat on a Sunday morning just makes you really, really feel good, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, that is basketball, right? And so I want to actually get into a little bit of college basketball. Yeah. Because March Madness is right around the corner. It's it's already March already. You know what I mean? So it's it's literally already here. Um, And so the tournament's coming up. We do have something special that we're planning for the tournament. Wink, wink. But we won't get into that a whole lot unless Owen wants to say anything nope, about I, it. That was perfect teaser. Yep. Okay. okay. I don't even know about this. Perfect. <laughs> perfect. Good. Oh, so we a team. <laughs> I do. I do want to talk about about March Madness though a little bit. And so right now we're kind of at a point where the mid-major tournaments, uh, a lot of the smaller schools are playing in their conference tournaments. And so you have a bunch of the D1 programs starting their conference tournaments right now. Um, there could be some some upsets. There have already been some upsets in these conference tournaments. Next week, we get into a lot of the bigger conferences, their conference tournaments. And those are super fun because those schools, I mean, it's like your rival schools. Like it's like in high school, you have like rivals. And like, if you're in the same division, like winning your conference tournament in your division, especially if it's like the SEC or like the big 12. Oh man, it's just really hard to do. And it's like, those games are really, really fun to watch. Um, Actually we cut cable earlier, 
but for my birthday, I'm getting cable back. It's like as a present. <laughs> So for like a month and a half, <laughs> just for March Madness. Yeah, yeah. So um, I'll be able to watch everything, um, and yeah, it's I'm so excited just to see the competitiveness. Do you guys have anything to add on on college basketball? Yeah, I have a question based off of um, what you're saying about the conference tournaments. Do you know what the correlation is? It, do you know how much of a correlation there is between winning your conference tournament and success in March Madness? Yes, there's. Uh, I, so I don't know the stats on the first round, right? Like if mm. if you um, if you win your conference tournament, how will you do in the first round? I do know that there isn't much of a correlation after the first round. Like it just is like kind of random, like, um, but I do think that there is some, some correlation to winning your conference tournament and then riding that at least into the first, first round, maybe even first weekend. But I think once you get past, like, there's such a gap in between, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like there's, there's like a five, six day gap from when you play your conference final to, uh, when you like, when you actually play in the tournament. And so if we talk about winning your conference, right, like if if we look at it from like a macro level, all those small schools that are like 13, 14, 15, 16 seats, the only reason they're there is because they won their conference tournament. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're, they lose most of the time in the first round. So like, I think it's the bigger schools. Like I could see a little bit of a correlation, like, um, Think about Penn State last year or um, think about like uh, um, trying to think here. Parker told us about Penn State last year. This is we, we go oh, over. Penn State, yeah, Penn State last year, they didn't win their conference mm-hmm. tournament, but they made it all the way to the championship. They went and before that, they were like ice cold. Like they mm-hmm. they weren't even supposed to make the tournament. And so they went on a huge run. They were hot at the right time. And then that did carry over. So. I think that it it does depend a little bit um, on the team, the situation. But if you get really hot towards the end of the year, that is a good sign. So, like, right now, for example, Gonzaga, they're getting hot right now. Usually Gonzaga is, like, a perennial one or two seed. Right now, they're, they're going to be, like, right around a seven seed. You know what I mean? Um, and unless they win their conference tournament, then they'll probably be, like, six or five, but still not a one or two. Um, and so they're getting hot at the right time. So I could see a scenario where a team like that could get hot in March, right, uh, in the tournament. But I think that there's not a huge correlation there because I've I've seen teams like, I mean, last year, like UConn, like I don't think they won their conference tournament. If I'm if I'm mistaken, I I don't think they did. But then they won the they won the chip. So, um, yeah. Anyway, I. I uh, don't think there's a huge correlation, but there is a little bit to be said about being hot at the right time. Yes, Luke. Parker, who do you think the ones are going to be this year? Uh, UConn, Arizona, um, they're, they're locked in, basically. They're almost locked in. Houston is uh, is locked in. Um, and then, I don't know who the... Uh, the four is going to be, um, could be, there's a whole lot of teams up there. Um, could be Tennessee. If they win out, if they, if Tennessee wins the sec tournament, like that's a whole lot of big wins. Um, I don't think anybody from the big 12 will get in there just because they've been beating each other up. Like all those schools have beaten each other up. Um, that's what i was gonna ask about houston like you think they're they're a lock even though the big 12 is like they could lose to a lot of different teams and they're a lock at this point okay. they they have i think they only have what four losses yeah something crazy. they're they they were number one overall last week right yeah so. yeah they're they're i think they're pretty much okay. a lock because they're gonna lose to a good team right yeah. so it's not really gonna hurt them a whole lot um but yeah, I think uh, I, th- I could see a world where Tennessee gets it. 
I could see a world where if everything breaks their way, Duke gets it. Um, but I think Duke will more likely be a two seed. Um, so yeah, it'll, it'll kind of be interesting for that fourth slot, but I think you have three teams that are locked in, in, uh, Arizona, Houston, and UConn. So, yeah. Doesn't Houston like choke every time? Well, I mean, it depends how you define choke. They, they haven't, they haven't made it to like the final four championship game. They usually lose in like the elite eight, you know, or sweet 16. Which is not, I mean, that's winning a couple games, but... I'm a four at point twenty one, and they lost to Baylor. Yeah, they lost mm-hmm. to Baylor. That was like a, a really good game. Um, but, I, I mean, that's still impressive, but if you're a one seed, your goal is to win it all. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've had but Houston honestly, in my like, final four, I think, the past three seasons, definitely the last two. And they've they've hurt me both times, so I'm hesitant to do it again. I mean, and, and think about this: like, if you live up to expectations, like you're a one seed and you live up to expectations, then making the final four is living up to expectations, mm-hmm. right? Because then theoretically, if everything works the way it should, there should be all one seed. It never happens, but theoretically, all those one seeds would be in the final four, and then they would just play each other, right? So. The best you can really like hope for is is a final four almost if you're a one seed like and then anything on top of that is just icing on the cake almost if you think about it that way yeah um because it's so hard to win it's a team of it's a tournament of of losers because everybody beats each other up you know there's only one person one person on top of the mountain it's like battle royale it's like um fortnite <laughs> well uh you have any sleepers i do yeah, <laughs> I do have some sleepers. Do, should I disclose them? Yes. <laughs> Give us two or three. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We can get into it. We can get into it a little bit. <clears throat> this isn't really a sleeper. It's just a team I really like a lot. Is Tennessee? Like they're not a sleeper. They're not a low seed. I just love them. Like, absolutely love them. <laughs> their players are, they have this small guard the kai ziggler oh Great my gosh game. he's crazy he's crazy he's like a little power ball running around and then you have this guy dalton connect i believe that's how you say his last name the guy's crazy he's like kd because his release so like when he shoots the ball it's like it's insane because his release is like way up here like nobody can block it he's like that high um he's just so good um, and then if we go sleepers, I don't know if you guys have seen Indiana State. Have you guys yeah. seen it in a state? Oh man, with the goggles. Yes, yes, yeah. they got they got mini Jokic, yeah. and they, <laughs> they literally he he just runs around. And his last name's like Avila or something, and um, he he basically plays like Jokic. He like facilitates. He like does the little like hook shot in the post you know what i mean and he just like reads the floor super well so indiana state i mean they could go on almost like a denver nuggets last year in the postseason type of run you know what i mean um that would be pretty iconic and i could see everybody getting behind that um and then i think a team from the uh actually the same the same conference it could be a two two bit conference in the wcc uh drake Drake is like, last year they played Miami, right? And Miami ended up making it like to the final four or something. Mm -hmm. Um, So they just got a bad draw. But a lot of those players are back for that Drake team. They have that burning experience. Like they've already been there. They've already been in the tournament. They've already lost the first round. It's kind of like Oral Roberts, right? Oral Roberts, they went to the tournament. They didn't succeed quite how they wanted to. And then they came back the next year as a 15 seed and won a couple games. So I, I could see a similar scenario for Drake this year too. This is why you guys need to really lock into the podcast right before March Madness because Parker is one of the best people you can go to for everything March Madness. This is where you want to get your information 
to be able to fill out your bracket. And you're definitely going to want to tune in to the special thing that we teased again. We'll tell you about that at a later date. But that that's going to be super helpful for you guys with your brackets. So stay tuned for that. Um, oh, yeah, I'm coming prepared for that. Let's just say that. He always is. Never not prepared. <laughs> I love March, though. March is great. What do you think about Nebraska? <laughs> the Cornhuskers. <laughs> oh, man, I think that's what they should stick to. <laughs> <laughs> nice like, I don't like him I don't like him <laughs> Parker's very anti Big Ten in general I other like than Big giving Ten. us Penn State last year which was correct uh, he generally is not a not a Big Ten supporter uh, they just let you down every year and and like, all ten what <laughs> <laughs> more like team ten yeah or is, wait, do you, what'd you say small ten yeah. More like, more like yeah. small ten. Because, yeah, more like not ten. <laughs> the great analysis. I That's... think we call it. <laughs> we... <laughs> I think we should do a. This is a different idea, but um, sometime maybe not this year. We we gotta do a Luke versus Parker March Madness where Parker gives all of this in depth analysis, and then Luke says Big Ten more like small ten. And then that's that's it. That's Luke's analysis. It's just <laughs> as simple as possible. <laughs> uh, we'll oh see. man, we'll see. that'll be so funny. And then you can put odds on it too. Like you bet on Luke, it's like a thousand, a thousand to one. And then you bet on Parker, it's like two hundred to one or something. Yeah. And then I don't yeah, know. Just how, in depth how, analysis. It's like, it's like Luke is just like I like this team's colors or something like that. Yeah, it's like opposite sides of the spectrum. It's like mm -hmm. I'm the guy who doesn't know anything, but somehow will end up doing better than the guy who puts hours and hours and hours of studying into it just because I pick random things. Because yeah. that's the beauty of March Madness. Yeah, I mean, there was what last year there was like two five seeds in the final four or something in an eight yeah. seed. Yeah, last year well, that'd be good. I can't even claim to act like I knew what I was doing. I put down random teams. Like, yeah, I'm still putting out insane. the same teams to go to the final four that I did in 2012. For goodness sakes, like I got Kansas winning it all still. Mm. <laughs> that's a joke. I don't know. I love that. I love I, that. Kansas could. It's possible. No, that's actually that's actually awesome. Um, I want to tell uh, McClister. Um, that we do you remember the St. Peter's run a couple years back? Yeah, Don Geiger, Edder, or however you pronounce the last name. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yep, yep, him. And they beat like Kentucky and Purdue and stuff. Um, we we all went to see me, Luke, and Owen, and one other guy went to go see for my birthday. We went to go see them play North Carolina back when they made it to the Elite Eight. No way. Yeah, so like we were going to that, that media. I'm huh? showing him pictures now. No, we bought that for him last year for his birthday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. I was showing him pictures. I used to be like really into college basketball. I don't know what, what happened, but I like grew I didn't grow out of it. I just stopped paying attention like uh two years ago. And I used to be like obsessed with March Madness. Like it was so sad when it got canceled in twenty twenty and everything. I was actually supposed to go to the first round of twenty twenty with my dad. But it got canceled. I was so sad. Oh, um, I, had that. I used to be like you. I used to like read up on everything and be like super in depth. And sometimes it'd pay off for me. Sometimes it wouldn't. But like, I would always love to see Kentucky go in the first round. Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah. Kentucky's crazy, man. They're, they're crazy this year. Like, I feel like Kentucky's always a crazy team. But this year they're like, what what the heck? They score like triple digits. They're in the hundreds almost every game. But they play no defense. It's okay. crazy. Yeah, they're just all offense. That's it. And they have such good scorers on that team. It's crazy. I'll always love Kentucky because the first ever March Madness bracket I did. I don't remember exactly. You might be able to tell me what you did. Kentucky win it in like 2014 somewhere around there 12 13 14 first ever uh, bracket no, i did kentucky no, I was an was eight seed 2011 11 kentucky is an eight seed randomly 
picked them, and then they went on a run. I picked uh, the Final Four entirely exactly right that year. First time doing a March Madness bracket because I ran with Kentucky as an eight seed. And I was like, this March Madness thing is easy. And then it's been downhill ever since. But Kentucky's special to me just because of that. Picking, picking the whole Final Four... Picking the whole Final Four is is wild. I wish I had proof. like <laughs> picking the whole Final Four is is insane. Like that is very very impressive. Um, if you if you pick the whole Final Four champion and like Final Two, like if you pick that right, you're basically guaranteed because there's so many points towards the back end. You're basically guaranteed to be in the top point zero 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 one percent of brackets. So. Yeah, that's yeah. wild. There's literally no I, record of it because I just printed one out and wrote stuff down. It's not like in the ESPN system. Nothing. That piece of paper well, is gone. I, I believe so. you, Owen, because you don't. You're Thank not. You. you don't lie. Like it's. You know what I mean. So, no, I believe you. I appreciate that. Um, we spent longer on that than uh, than planned. So, I say we we get to the game and we'll wrap up episode number 29 um like i said at the beginning i think this game could either be fantastic and we continue playing it for months to come or it could be terrible and this is the only time we play it so we're gonna find out um i don't have a name for it at all but um quick quick, name on the spot whip it out let's go quick you don't have time to think just name go don't tell me whip it out that's the weird um (laughs) Well, when you should get out of contact like that. Yeah. Um, I don't... I can tell you what uh, I was inspired by was okay. I had seen... Well, explain the game and then I'll say a name for it. Okay, that works. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, the game is each of us will say... If it goes quick, we we probably just each of us. Um, we each think of an athlete. And so we, we, like, if I go first, I would say my athlete. And then we all say in our lives what we are that athlete of. So, like, somebody could be oh, the oh. Steph Curry of driving. I don't know what that means, but you you explain that to me. And I was it's inspired. Called, the game was athlete analogy. I mean. All right. That, that is great for on the spot. <laughs> athlete actually... analogy. I love that. <laughs> I mean, you set it up perfectly. It's alliteration of the athlete analogy, and I just alliterated the alliteration of the athlete analogy. And that's a great name about making an analogy about a game of analogies about athletes. That you say analogy is about that was a lot of legend. Exactly. We're off to a great start with this game. I love how this is going. All right. So, um, yeah, I was inspired by this because I saw a couple of posts where some people were like, um. They're like, Jeremy Grant is the Tobias Harris, or is the Kevin Durant of Tobias Harris's. And it's like a three-step, like, three basketball players that it's like, this guy is... That's awesome the, because that's this, all basketball. Yeah. Like, if somebody said, um, like, Mitchell Trubisky is the Geno Smith of Carson Wentz's. And then it's like, you have to kind of, like, step by step, like, okay, wait. So that means that he's this of the... It's a very fun game, um, but that's that's different. This is a spin of that. So, because uh, I brought it up, I'll go first, and I would like to present the athlete Russell Wilson. He's been in the headlines. The Broncos just recently cut him, and they're costing themselves eighty five million dollars. Um, so Russell Wilson is the athlete. Now we all, all four of us, think what are we the Russell Wilson of in our lives? And I'll go first because I knew I was going to pick Russell Wilson. I'm the Ru- I currently right now in my life. I'm the Russell Wilson of reading books. Oh, that's such a good one. Because when I was younger, <laughs> I was a prolific reader. Started reading at yes. like younger than nor like started reading at an early age, earlier than normal. Um, was just like read a ridiculous amount of books in elementary school, even into middle school, reading a t- a crazy amount of books. Russell Wilson. Great success as a young quarterback, as a rookie, as a second-year quarterback, wins the Super Bowl. So that lines up. And then it's just fallen off a cliff since COVID. My reading and Russell Wilson. I don't read books, like, at all anymore. And it's not good. (laughs) 
I, I really got to get back to, to reading books. So yeah. Russell Wilson of reading. It's a good one. Thank that you. is good. I got one. Let's hear it. Go for it. All right. I'm the Russell, I'm the Russell Wilson of, uh, of school. Cause, uh, like, like the first five weeks goes really well for me. And then I just, and then I just fall off. Is that like in college specifically? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's like especially like I had Russell Wilson on my fantasy team in uh in like 20, 2020, 2021. He he started off like super hot the first five weeks. I was like leading my I, I was like five and up, and then he just fell off a cliff. Mm. And yeah. It's like there's this meme and it's like Russell Wilson at the at like the first half of the season compared to the second half, and it's like it's like a horse. Oh, it's like a yeah. dog it looks really good, and then it's just like a stick finger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, that's that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a really good one. So I was good. gonna say, I think I am the Russell Wilson of Rainbow Loom. Oh, that's, that's a Rainbow great Loom. one. Wow. Yeah. And so here's why I say that, okay? Because I used to be a bandwagon fan. Like, you guys know this. But, you know, McLister knows it now. I used to be a really bandwagon fan. And so back in my Rainbow Loom era, um, I made, when the Seahawks won the championship and Russell Wilson led them to the championship game and they won, I had, like, a Seahawks bracelet. So, like, I made it with Rainbow Loom, and then I spelled out Seahawks with Rainbow Loom, like, the letters and stuff. He was um, talented. I love it. I, I, had, I had all the... so impressed. He went... I have a penguin, you know? I still have it. I hang it on the Christmas tree every year. Like, a penguin <laughs> ornament thing that I made with Rainbow Loom, and I, I... I don't know. I used to be really good at that stuff. Oh, I must have spent so much time on it. I don't know. <laughs> But anyway, I so you know, I was like really good at Rainbow Loop. And then, you know, that era kind of ended and it just haven't done it since then, you know, and just like Russell Wilson, he hasn't been able to throw a good good ball since then, since his his uh his good good days back in Seahawks era. So mm-hmm. yeah. that, we're also a, a Warriors fan or a Heat fan. <laughs> Which which team was that would have been that, that would have been Heat era, right? That would have been Heat era as well. Yes, I don't have any Heat Rainbow Loom bracelets though, so I only made it for the Seahawks, like sports wise. But um, that would have been my Heat era, yeah, like the Miami Heat back then. Yeah, and now I don't like LeBron at all, so I don't know what I was thinking when I was younger. <laughs> Good luck following that one up, Luke. I would say, yeah, that was tough to follow up. But I would say I'm the Russell Wilson of TV of watching TV shows. I get I get really into a good show for like a season or two. And I'm like, I'm all in. I'm like, this is a great show. I'm like watching this whole show. And then it's like I season three rolls around, or I keep getting I'm like, I just stop watching it. And then I get traded to a new show and I try and start again. <laughs> that was good. I like that. I like that analogy. That's a good yeah. one. Are you currently a Russell Wilson? I guess yeah, he will be a free agent once he's cut released. Are you currently like, a free agent like Russell Wilson? I'm like last year in Seattle, Russell Wilson. Mm. Meaning, well, I'm just about to finish up season two of the show that I'm watching. And when I first started it, I was you know watching it a lot, kind of thing. But now I've like. You know, maybe watch an episode every couple of days, kind of thing. It's the no, 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 the descent has begun. People, but like, it also is just like I don't have as much motivation to watch the show right now. I do want to. I do want to say something though. I feel like you've watched every episode of Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> I did that over COVID when there was nothing better to do. Isn't like, there like twenty the around in a big house? There's like 20 seasons of Grey's Anatomy. I've only watched up to season 17. I stopped watching after that. It was like <laughs> really, really bad. Luke's the LeBron of watching Grey's Anatomy. Just so yeah, many seasons. The longevity uh, and consistency is right. crazy. I would, say, I would say I'm probably like 
I would say I'm like the Kobe of watching Grayson. No, I wouldn't even say that. I would say <laughs> who's like <laughs> oh, oh, oh. the close to his face. What do you mean the Kobe? Jeez, dude. You went on for a long time. I was great for a long time. So you just stop. <laughs> We all thought that's what you meant. So, not at all what the I cluster meant. just said it out loud. I'm just trying to think of what. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I'm not even going to use basketball. I'm like the Albert Pujols of watching Grey's Anatomy. Like, I'm pretty good, but there's definitely a lot of people better than me. I guess. That, that that works. Yeah. Like, did you have so, a crazy prime of watching like, it? Like, yeah, in my, in my prime over COVID, okay. I watched it all. I knew it all. Like, I was crazy. Gotcha. And then, you know, once I stopped watching it, like, people will watch that show. Like, there have been people that have watched that show episode for episode every season, multiple, multiple times through. Like, I have not done that. I've watched it once through, and I was content with that. Okay. I was good in my prime, but, like, now that I'm retired, I'm done. So Luke of watching Grey's Anatomy is like some athlete who had a short but prolific prime. Derek Rose, you're the Derek Rose of watching Grey's Anatomy. I don't know why I keep going basketball players, but yeah, I think that because Derek Rose had what like two, three amazing seasons, that's like wow, he could have been so good for so long if you had kept up that pace, Luke. But just just didn't happen. So. We 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 created another like side game now of like picking the thing and then what athlete are you? So I guess this game works both ways. But does somebody I, else want to give an athlete? Exactly. Yeah, I'll give an athlete here. I want to Joel Embiid. Ooh. Joel Embiid as the athlete. I I haven't thought mine through yet, okay. um, so I need to think about it. Well, okay. So let's to help us all brainstorm here. Let's think about Joel Embiid. He is. Fantastic oh, in the regular no, no, no. season. Wow. Oh, wait. You have he, to interpret it for yourself. I'm just trying yeah. to help people out to fill like, some time like, so like, that we can think. Each person needs to interpret it for themselves. And then, like, from there, they're like, that is the, that, like, you know. Okay. So oh, it's trying to fill a bus. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to give us time to brainstorm. <laughs> I guess. Mm. Okay, so can I can I talk through it myself then? And just be like, you don't have to take this into account sure i or, guess i don't know i, I mean for my own self Boy. my my thought process <laughs> you don't have to go with this i'm thinking Embiid is dominant in the regular season but he has not performed in crunch time he's also gotten hurt a lot but again we have to remember he is elite one of the greatest centers we've ever seen so i'm thinking something that i am really really good at but just for some reason randomly am not good at it at certain times not fine all right go for it i am the jo- uh, joel Embiid of ap classes Ooh, i would do really really well in the ap classes like i would crush the ap classes and then the ap tests rolled around and i just would not like perform like i did not do great on many of my ap tests but then you know you also think joel Embiid can't stay healthy you know there were i had my hiccups during those classes as well like you actual know. hiccups like you were sick or like... oh like you know i'd be doing really well and then i'd like bomb one quiz mm, but then like, gotcha. i'd be doing really well that kind of thing. that's a really good one the yeah the ap tests are are like the playoffs of the school season so that 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 fits really well. I have mine. All right. I'm the Joel Embiid of walking. Oh boy. Yeah. So here's here's what I mean. <laughs> I walk I, real good most of the time. I, no, seriously, you guys don't understand. I I can really walk. Like I like, can draw, I can walk very well. Elite. My stride length very long. Right. Just mm-hmm. an elite walker. Mm-hmm. That's why my last name starts with the W, just like the word walker. They named me after that. And so I've been elite since I was a little kid, right? Just like Joel Embiid. I just, 
I just didn't know it until I got older, just like Joel Embiid. You know, he didn't discover mm-hmm. basketball until he was, you know, in his mid-teenage years. Mm-hmm. I didn't know I was good at walking until I was like three, right? And then I figured it out and I started walking. <laughs> so we're similar in that aspect. Of, and also, you know, like in the postseason, when the game's on the line, you know, I just haven't performed quite as well. That's what Joel Embiid hasn't mm-hmm. done, right? And so for me, I can say the same exact thing. When it gets towards the end of the day, I I just don't walk quite as well. I get tired. I the yeah. injuries start to catch up to me. I mm-hmm. would rather just you know be in bed, just mm-hmm. chilling. Right? It's the same exact thing. Mm-hmm. And and to make matters worse, the Joel Meat has an injury history. We just we all know that that's the case, right? Mm-hmm. And so if you look back on on my injury history as well. And, and my failure to to walk, when I had sprained ankles, I was really hobbling. I I was hobbling like mm-hmm. like a little bunny probably, and so I think I was in a similar regard to Joel Embiid when I was walking. Mm-hmm. That's that's a very good one. Um, I yeah yeah, I the walking at three. I don't know about that one, but. Uh, yeah, that was that was fantastic. Um, I think that I am the Joel Embiid of social interactions in general, um, because I the, the, the cluster. I love the faces you make for all of these. Whenever we oh. say these, um, I think I'm the Joel Embiid of social interactions because, um, when it's low key and the expectations are not there low pressure situations i'm fantastic but the nerves get to me real quick in the high pressure situations and i think like joel Embiid, i can kind of just um start missing my shots you know like i'll still i'll still put them up but there, there's going to be more turnovers it's going to be a lot more clunky i'm not going to be as confident with the thing with my ball handling, I'm going to be second guessing myself, hesitating. Um, and so, uh, yeah, social interactions, I will kill it in the regular season. But then we get to that game seven crunch time. The pressure really gets to me sometimes. And uh, I'll just I'll really overthink it. Well, oh, and you have you like have like one game seven. I mean, actually, no, you're like in game five right now. What do you mean? Like currently in my life or yeah like you have a girlfriend that's not social interactions <laughs> no i think social to get a girlfriend I, well, yeah no so i i can see you come you know, you the game you know, that's game seven over <laughs> because like i know always like you didn't you didn't want to like go to a, like prop i remember exactly actually, i know i see what you're saying i think you combine and beat and ben simmons right don't want to show up in the crunch time <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ben Simmons at prom <laughs> passing the ball under the basket. <laughs> no, but, but then you actually went and you had a good time, right? So yes. Then you're in beat, right? I, okay. But I'm saying the, the fact that you didn't want to show up part, right? Mm-hmm. But then once you get there, it's fine. Yeah. And then you're in peak. <laughs> okay. So. I'll take that. So ben, yeah. Also, did you guys see the news today? Ben Simmons is out for the season again because they're going to try to analyze yeah. what to do about his so just yeah we had to mention that because ben simmons um but yeah joel and beat of social interactions slash prom i guess you're up right. cluster joel joel and beat of uh watching watching the commanders because it's like <laughs> hear me out hear me out because it's like sometimes we start off injury prone. Sometimes we start off really well. Then we bomb. Then we need to go on like a, a four or five game which we do really well. And then when it's crunch time, some of the playoffs, we do bad. And then usually sometimes I'm so salty that I don't even watch the playoffs really until it's like conference championships or regional or whatever it is. Um, yeah, you got a conference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't initially don't love comparing Joel Embiid to anything Washington Commanders related that just doesn't off the bat doesn't sit well but that that made sense I approved 
<laughs> I would approve. I'm good with that one. Yeah. So now it's the Lukes. We need I'll give my athlete next. My athlete is Baker Mayfield. Oh, of course it is. And I thought of mine already. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Baker Mayfield of playing basketball. <laughs> Honestly, that could have been worse. And I, I don't think I need to explain myself. I think that, no. mm-hmm. and I think, I think, I think, that's, I think you two, I think you two could attest to that. So correct. That yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I've seen it with my own yeah. eyes. Because I would like to add down on YouTube with your own <laughs> eyes. But <laughs> yeah, I did. Luke was like Shaq in his early basketball days because he was just bigger than everyone. Like Baker Mayfield winning a Heisman exactly. in college. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Oh, and you made that analogy even better. Thank you. That's athlete analogies for you. Well, that's okay. Um, that's that's great. Wow. Um I got one. I am the Baker Mayfield of running. So like the full my running career. When I first started, I was like pretty good. And then I got injured and then i was just like didn't do anything for a while then i came back really good for a, for like a season or two and i just haven't been the same since so mm. yeah we'll see we'll see what happens i like that one yeah the baker i i like how we're incorporating here that we're recognizing baker was was really good right luke oh, it was I won't even deny it. You can't deny the hyphen yeah. that he won. But the second he stepped foot on an NFL field, he immediately turned into a He game. brought the Browns to the playoffs and won them a playoff game. There was hope. So, I'm I'm the um I'm the Baker Mayfield of cooking. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's so perfect. I I just I, I just suck. I, I just think suck. Baker's too good, honestly. Like he had good. He was good in college. He had a good season with the Browns. He was good this year. I don't. I'm. I not Owen approved. This is the first one I disagree with. I think you no, need to pick I somebody just, worse. I think, Parker, I don't think you could have picked a better analogy. <laughs> yes, I'm just awful. I just am the absolute worst in the world. Yes. And and I know Owen likes Baker Mayfield, so he's not going to approve of this. Exactly, but he doesn't have to. Exactly. Uh, and it's just, well, it needs to be on. I I don't. I was just saying. But if I did want to, you know, power. get Owen on my side with this analogy, all I have to do is just remind him of my peanut butter and chocolate chip sandwiches, which are just absolutely <laughs> elite. <laughs> that's your Baker Mayfield high. That's your Heisman. That's my Heisman. Yeah. Okay, well, that's fair. On. You've won me They're over. They're delicious. Wait, right? Wait, you said Luke Pickles. You said you said that there you have them all the time. You used to eat those like all the time in middle school. Yeah, they're so oh, good. Oh, wow. they have a bond already. Yep. See, they're 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 elite. Exactly. We knew you two would get along. <laughs> I would say I'm the Baker Mayfield of math because Baker Mayfield was drafted number one overall, top prospect. I was a top math prospect elementary school pre-algebra we started to it was a little shaky and then we went farther in algebra not not the best in middle school and then uh, again like baker mayfield i didn't really like completely fall off but there there was a drop off in my math skills in high school i i went down from the like accelerate like the top like honors classes into like like half a category below. Um, and so that's kind of like me dropping that category between ninth and 10th grade was uh, like Baker switching to the Bucks, I think, where he went to a different situation and improved a little bit. So um, yeah, Baker Mayfield of math. Mm. Not bad at math. Like, just like Baker Mayfield's not that bad. Thanks, Luke. <laughs> That's why that was a not Luke approved. <laughs> not Luke. Not Parker approved. Not. You're too good at math, though. You were in the elite classes. You would have to be in the absolutely. You have to be dropping out of school. I would have to be flunked math. Yes, yeah, exactly. You have to have a zero in math. 
You have to hit rock bottom, I guess. Mm. You're gonna figure me too. I guess. So. Yeah, like you, like you've already have had to have dropped out of school mm. solely because of math and just <laughs> gone to work in a bakery in order to be safe. Yeah, specifically a bakery <laughs> because of baker. Yeah. He's baker. Yeah. Yep. Or you could work in a maid field. Either one. <laughs> My favorite type of field. Um. All right, my sister. All right, what's your athlete? Brian Scalabrini. The final round. Know. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, okay, how do we summarize Brian Scalabrini to Brian Luke? Scalabrini. Um, oh he's like, he's like, he's like, dang. He's, uh, people made yeah. fun of him because he, like, doesn't seem super athletic, but, like, he's an NBA player who's really good. Okay. Just have, compared have, to other NBA have, players, he didn't uh, seem that great. He rode the bench for the Celtics, and, like, people think he's really bad, and they're like, oh, I'm going to play him in a pickup game because he sucks. But then people play him in a pickup game, and they get, like, smacked. His famous quote is, I'm closer to LeBron than you are to me. Okay. So he's a white ginger who is in the he NBA, did, so, like... NBA. He didn't huh? do... Like, yeah. He has some good NBA highlights. Yeah. What you got, Luke? So I am the Brian Scalabrini. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I am the Brian Scalabrini of eating oysters while jumping out of a plane covered in mustard while holding two snakes in either hand, what? wearing wearing Wait. a clown hat without shoes on. We're going to need the explanation on this one. Because I have no idea what that kind of me is. Hmm. I then you worked with what you had, and I appreciate the creativity. <laughs> I, that's a great term, Owen. Okay, I appreciate the creativity. Yeah, that's you the new, with, yeah. the new affirmation. <laughs> I appreciate you know, the creativity. You worked with what you had. <laughs> I'm probably pretty good for the limited knowledge I had. Hmm, I gotta think of my. No, Calabrini uh, playing kickball. Ooh. You want to think I'm good at it, but I am three-time repeating champ in my team sports class in high school. Three times? That's a run in high school. That's a... I have got a great one. I think you know him one time, too. Wow. I've got a great one. Luke's been inspired by Luke. You won... Boys FCA Cam volleyball team is the Ryan Scalabrini of volleyball <laughs> yeah. team. Let's go! Yeah, <laughs> only boys seem to win at FCA leadership camp ever in volleyball. Ever? Ever? Still? Yes. Well, the camp doesn't the camp exist doesn't anymore. Exist. Oh wait, yeah, okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah, dude. Imagine if Parker had come, that would have the team would have been even more We've dominant, but. We still, yeah. Nobody else. Uh, there's like uh, maybe one person listening who gets this reference at all. But congrats maybe to that one person. Comment if you know what we're talking about. Maybe Tim's listening to this episode. Maybe. maybe. And he made well, it at, an hour in. I feel like he has to listen. Yeah. So that that's great. Definitely the Brian Scalabrini of, um, of the, the, yeah, volleyball at FCA camp. That's a really good one. Man. The, Brian Scalabrini is such a great pool. I want to have a really good answer to like do it justice, you know? I know. Same here. Same here. I'm trying to think through what mine's big. Mm. That is oh, that's such a great one. I haven't heard the I haven't heard Brian Scalabrini referenced in quite a while. It's oh, just, I got one. It's great to one. think about him. All right. I am the Brian Scalabrini of getting on the Wi-Fi. Okay. So my thought process behind that is like, okay, like usually, you know, someone can just airdrop you, you know, the code. Yeah. Just like it's pretty easy to get in the NBA. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was, I set you up. I started you up on false pretenses. So. I mean, getting on Wi-Fi, unless it's your house, right? It's really hard to get on someone's Wi-Fi. 
especially if they're just some random person, you don't even know who they are, right? And so just like getting into the NBA, it's really hard to get into the NBA, right? Just like it's normally hard to get on any Wi-Fi except from people that you know, right? And so I think it's similar to getting on Wi-Fi, but then what do you do? You go to the settings app and you press Wi-Fi and then you press, there's like a bunch of them that pop up and you press one, right? And then it pops up and it says passcode, right? What do you do? It's a good step-by-step. Exactly. It's it's step-by-step. You, you, you dismantle, you dismantle how you get on the Wi-Fi. You just break it down. And this is what Brian Scalabrini did. He broke down to people. I am better than you. I am better than you. That's what Brian Scalabrini did. And so I just think that it just correlates 100%. Brian Scalabrini is here. We are here. You know, just like mm. Wi-Fi is here and normal people are here. Again. Okay. That... I was thought I was tracking with you for a while, and then well, that doesn't make sense. But it also <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> I think that's the title of the Parker Wolf autobiography. When Parker writes a book that made sense, that didn't make sense, but it also made perfect sense by Parker Wolf. Yes, that's no. That wouldn't be the title of the book. That would be like one of the reviews on the back be like five stars this book didn't make sense but it made perfect sense that would be the (laughs) reviews for the book i don't know what the title is tbd maybe um i still i don't have a great one for this which i'm disappointed in but um i i think that i would consider myself the brian scalabrini of cooking i know parker already said cooking for baker mayfield but i think that that i have a good case for this because I've had, I had a lot of people underestimate my cooking skills when I uh, left home for college. I had many, many people be like, are you sure you're going to be able to cook all your meals for yourself? And I, I was going to the MBA of cooking, right? Where I'm, I'm responsible for cooking all my meals, went to the, went to the MBA of cooking and people doubted me and I have held my own. I'm by no means a chef like Luke, Luke's the Steph Curry of cooking. I'm the Brian Scalabrini. I'm dependable. I I can make some good solid meals on a budget. Got a budget with the college college funds. Mm-hmm. And so I've got I've got my go-tos and I'm good at those. Nothing crazy fancy, just like Brian Scalabrini. And so uh yeah, Brian Scalabrini of cooking. I like that. I think it's good. I think I like that. that. Luke, would would you be okay being called the Steph Curry of cooking? Yes, I'll accept that. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to make sure that that was yeah. <laughs> when he, when he's when he's mixing his ingredients, he shoots it. He he shoots oh, over to the garlic goes in the pot. Yeah, Luke is a much more like Steph Curry with a bowl and a whisk in his hand than a basketball. Mm. Yeah, Steph Curry. Exactly. Yeah. He's back. He's like, oh, man. Chef Lukey. Oh. Chef Lukey does not. <laughs> I don't know about that. But. All right. Chef so that I think the game was a success. I was worried about it. I didn't know if it was going to be good, but I think uh, the game went pretty well. And now it has a name. Too, and so. Luke gave it a fantastic name. So, yeah. Um. So uh, we've been recording for an hour and 20 minutes. This is a very long episode. (laughs) Normally they don't go this long, but uh, we've got an extra person. So maybe if it's just like 20 minutes for every person on the episode. So three of us, we go an hour, we add McLister, we go an extra 20 minutes. I think that's just the simple math of it. So Um. (laughs) simple math, Owen. Wait, but you're the Baker Mayfield of math. So, yeah, I can make the simple to... throws. How did... How I can I can hit that? the 5-yard slant. You shouldn't have been able to do any math. Yeah. <laughs> Baker Mayfield can't even stand. Like, yeah. Baker Mayfield is the Baker Mayfield of Baker Mayfields. I mean, I think that's... <laughs> <laughs> We got to end on that. 
thank you for joining us, Luke McClister. Hopefully we'll have you uh, back on. You're welcome back anytime. Um, hopefully next year when you and Luke are roommates, um, if it'll, it'll just be like, oh, hey, I'm recording an episode. Want to join? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm okay. <laughs> I'm glad we could finally have you on uh, two years after you asked to first be on. All right. Glad to be here. And remember, we have the special thing coming up for March Madness. You'll find out about that soon. So stay tuned. I think that'll be it. Check the Instagram. That's I think that's where that's going to be. There's the QR code in the corner. So you can scan that if you're not following us on Instagram already, which you should be. But thanks for watching. This is episode 29 of season two. Congrats to anyone who stayed to the end of this, because this is the longest episode we've done maybe ever honestly uh this is at least a top five longest episode we've ever done not on live stream um so shout out to you if you stayed till the end we'll see you guys for the march madness surprise next time thanks for watching adios